Welcome to Conversations. Before I introduce my guest, uh, I would like to apologize just a little bit. If the show seems sort of ragged, we're trying something different, and also our good friend Dan is incapacitated today and is not going to be with us, and so we're not going to be able to move cameras with the flexibility that we normally have. Um, let's see, also, uh, this weekend, yesterday, the gay, lesbian, friendly online magazine, Rural Irony, that uh, we've been working on, uh, premiered. It's now on the website, and I'm going to give that address again. Um, shameless self-promotion. It's ruralirony.homestead.com. Check us out. <coughs> Ed, and Ed, the director, and I have been talking about doing a number of different shows, trying different things. Uh, tired of religion, tired of HIV, tired of, what are some of the other things? Public health. And we had thought about doing a show, a number of shows on different alternative therapies and treatments, et cetera. And I didn't think I knew anybody. And then last week, walked into Missoula AIDS Council about, to talk to somebody about something. And uh, this woman walked through the door. And I went, you, probably scared her to death. But uh, it was somebody I knew and have known for a long time who does something alternative. And I asked her to join us this week. And that person is? My mind is gone. Sylvia. Sylvia. I'm thinking surely everything else. <laughs> Roberts. Sylvia Roberts. No so, S on the end. Sylvia Roberts. Yes. Okay. Welcome to the show. I'm really Thank glad you. to have you. We are going to be talking about something called my crib knows it. Jin Chin. Jiatsu. You say it. Jin Chin Jiatsu. Okay. I assume this is some sort of ancient or traditional Chinese. Uh, um, therapy? Ancient, Japanese. Japanese. Um, Jinshin Jiutsu, when you in, translate it, it's the art of the creator through compassionate being. Compassionate meaning knowing and understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been uh, involved with this or interested in this? I probably received my first book uh, to self-study 20 years ago and then started um, taking classes um, 10 years ago. Oh. Um, and you're up in Arlie, is it? Yes. And uh, I found out by trying to get a hold of you today that you also work out of the Blue Mountain Clinic. Is yes. that correct? Yes. People can find you by calling there. Mm -hmm. Or uh, we don't usually kind of do publicity for people, but we will put up a number <coughs> uh, for you. Okay. How about giving us that verbally so if when we're editing it, we don't have to track it down? Okay, for the clinic is 721-1646. All right, and uh, is that where you would prefer people get a hold of you? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to do a little biography on you since uh, you and I met on, under rather special circumstances of sort. Um, I, of course, am HIV positive, and uh, there was a long period where it was sort of like in the wilderness. I got tested, but there was, just sort of went into the shadows and didn't talk to anybody, and then I was informed that a support group was forming, and uh, I went, and one of the people I met was a rather dynamic, uh, handsome gentleman gray-haired, kind of a bush cut, and his name was Henry, and uh, it turned out he was straight, which was kind of neat, because he could speak with a kind of authority, or not authority, what would be the word? A lot of us were scared of the gay thing as well as the HIV thing, and at least he had one of those down, sort of. Uh, Henry passed away in what year? I, I believe it was 94. And. Uh, he really was a, 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 there seemed to me, a fine human being. And I met you because you were doing this treatment therapy and offering it uh, at that time free to people who were HIV positive. And uh, that was kind of neat. I'd like to ask you, since you said that uh, you didn't mind talking about it, how Henry became HIV positive. <coughs> Henry 
um, was from Switzerland, and he had been um, a heroin addict for several years of his life, and he was had been married also to a woman who was also a heroin addict and would help support their uh, habits through prostitution. So there were a couple of different ways he could have contracted the disease. Wow. As I say, he was a, a very nice, very seemed very intelligent, pleasant person. It must have been a blow to you to lose him. It was a long process. It was long and, and hard. As long as we're talking about that, I, I, it seems so long ago in some ways when I ask you, it, and it wasn't that long ago chronologically, but the world has changed so much. Not only am I not afraid to talk about HIV, I got a TV show talking about HIV. Um, how do you feel about the difference in the world between then and now? Any thoughts, comments? Of, is it the world of HIV mm -hmm. that, um, well, as we were talking earlier, we were, Henry and I were on the nightly news, and this was probably 10 years ago here in Missoula, and I was very afraid to be on that news station and to have my life exposed and my children's life exposed. And I see a big difference in that way. I don't think people have to be so fearful now of, of um, being, uh, having people know that you might be HIV positive, I don't think. There's more information out there. Um, I hope people are more aware. I hope so, too. Well, I know they are. Um, there, having said that, let's go back to Jin Jin. Jiu Jitsu. Um, I must confess that I'm not exactly a skeptic, but on the other hand, uh, I just maybe am not interested in all this stuff until now, I guess, because I wanted to do this. Um, so I'm going to ask you what sorts of, oh, and on the other hand, I also want to say that whatever works is fine, you know. Um, so I want to ask you, what sorts of things, uh, complaints would a person come to you asking about or for help with? Um, I love this art form. It's, um, it's a harmonizer. <coughs> My teachers uh, teach that we are not healers. Um, we are practitioners of a harmonizing art form. Um, so if there's any disharmony in the body, no matter what that disharmony is, this can address that. Um, I see this art form, I see it personally as a, a potential refining. It refines a person's self-knowledge. It refines how a person lives, I suppose. There's some sort of refinement that starts to happen. I believe that that's because of the balancing it offers. I think that when you become more in harmony and more in balance in your life, you are attracted to those things that are in harmony with you. You're not so attracted to that which creates disharmony. Well, you've given me a lot to think of right there. You're talking about it as an art form, which is a lot different from talking about a therapy or something that cures, this cures that, um, and I like that. Also, for one thing, I was thinking about Alan Watts. Do you remember him? Right. For those of you of a different generation, Alan Watts was probably the biggest spokesman at the time for 
oriental ways of thinking and philosophy and he had a, an incredibly soothing voice and I remember him talking about the tea ceremony and uh, the fact that it wasn't about making tea it was about focusing your attention and uh, about the kinds of things that you're talking about right here about um, harmony uh, relationships uh, of yourself and to the world. Still, however, um, would I go to you if I'm feeling fine? Let's put it that way. Yes. Yes. This is also cumulative in its effects so that the more you do it, the more you use it, it creates more harmony and more balance within your life, within your living. You, I can't remember exactly what you said, but you said something, and I wanted to interrupt and didn't, but which could imply either that it was for the person to whom it was done or the person by whom it was done. Uh, and of course, there's the possibility that it's for both. Would you talk about that? Uh, maybe, if okay. I understand you. If you understand my, my, my question, it sounds as if this is as much a, a process for you as it is for the person that you're dealing with, that it's helped you grow and that, uh, this is, that there's an interaction between you and the people you work with. There Would that is. be correct? There is, and Jinshin Jiu-Jitsu is um, developed <coughs> or is an art form that you can either work on yourself you can apply the art to yourself or have a practitioner offer it to you. Oh. So I can work on myself right now and be applying Jin Shin Jiu I can hold my thumbs. That is an, uh, this is a practice. Any one of the fingers you can hold and they address certain aspects of the person. Um, Jin Shin Jiu-Jitsu is about relationships. It's about relationships between the body, the mind, the spirit, the emotions. They're all interwoven. Uh, there's a relationship between breath and the emotion. It's about the relationship between breath and the mind, or the body and the mind. It's about those relationships. and. And as I was saying, that I can be doing these things on myself as I sit here anywhere I am. I can be addressing something that I may perceive as an imbalance in me. Um, if I'm worrying a lot, if I was to worry a lot about being here and talking with you, I know that by holding my thumbs, that's going to... Um, help support the balance within me, help support harmony within me, so that worry does not burden me physically, so that it doesn't get set into my being. Um, I was thinking about St. Catherine, who talked about the greatest form of meditation for her was her embroidery, the fact that if she could concentrate on each particular stitch and be there in that moment that it was just as good as long hours of prayer or you know that sort of thing and I'm I don't presume to say that these are, are equal but this it sounds to me that a lot of this is taking yourself seriously focusing on the things that are out of harmony with yourself and uh, and, and focusing on them and, and dealing with them is it being present with yourself, um, being present and being intimate. Into me see, into me see, intimacy. That's nice. It also occurs to me that it wasn't St. Catherine, it was St. Uh, Teresa of Avila, so no calls, please. <laughs> uh, there, all of these things have a kind of, what should we say? explanation you know, this works because we're gonna. you did say that this had something to do with uh, pressure 
uh, that there was an aspect somewhat like acupressure. Is that correct? It's somewhat like acupressure, maybe in theory. <clears throat> I see it more as holding. I don't put a lot of pressure. Some practitioners do, but I don't. It's, um, it's similar to acupuncture. Well, we're set up here for a demonstration of this. Um, I don't know what you tell me that normally people quite often just that it's restful and people quite often drift off and go to sleep. Yes. Which is not necessarily good for a talk show, but we'll try to find something to say while this goes on. Uh, before we begin, Sylvia, I want to just kind of list some of my infirmities and see if they're is in that list anything that uh, might be more addressed than any of these others? HIV positive, of course. Um, had a motorcycle accident, got opened up from here to take out a kidney. A few years back, a large hernia developed, so I've got that, which gives me some insecurities, of course. Uh, massive allergies to penicillin and a few other things. Uh, I could, the way that Jinshin Jiutsu works is that I read the pulses on both wrists, three deep and three superficial, and that tells me where there is harmony or lack of harmony <coughs> in the energy systems that flow through the body in the meridians, and then I address it that way. You could tell me, someone may come to me and say, I have a headache. And I would always listen to their pulses. And I'm not looking to cure or to take away the headache. I'm looking to help support harmony. And in supporting that harmony, maybe the headache will be relieved. And possibly. So there's an element of diagnostic here, but it may not be diagnostic in the sense that you're looking for a specific disease or symptom. So no, and there may be, you might have a headache because of a certain system in your body that is not in harmony, but when I listen to the pulses, what I may hear is a system that is affecting another system that is creating the headache. It may not be directly. So let, I'll deal with that, I'll deal with one system that may affect the system that's out of harmony. It's whatever the pulses are saying. The pulses are telling me what is in most need. Okay. So where would we start? Start sitting up or would you like me, we have a table down. here. Lie down. All right. I don't know what to talk about with this. Oh, whoops. In this. Should I leave this? I don't know. You keep it off. Okay. Yeah, but mine is. And I need close. to have a chair. All right. To sit. And I should probably sit on that side, right? If I will reach. Yeah, you'll reach. Okay. Now, Sylvia, I, it's kind of hard for me to talk here, so maybe. If you can talk about some of what you're doing or okay. as we go along Listen, as well. You have to have your legs uncrossed. All right. Um, so I'm going to listen to your pulses, and I'll listen to the superficial and the deep. Are you comfortable? <clears throat> trying to be a little would you rather have the pillow under your knees no no that's not I'm just taking a bit to, I can feel a little tension in my body are you okay there mm-hmm now, I hold these positions, and I'll hold these positions 
until I, I use the word hear, I feel, <coughs> I hear a transformation in the pulsing. And the pulsing will be synchronized in both of my hands before I move on to the next step. Now, do you talk to people as you do this? I do. I, often I leave it up to the person receiving. They sometimes may feel a need to talk or, or be quiet. Um, most people who are regular, they come in and they're, they're pretty quiet and they just sleep, which is very healing. One of the parts that I think is, is very pretty about this work is that I get to sit here and hold these places and in that holding I'm able to observe many things that are happening with you. I can observe your breath and there's usually a shift or a change in the breath during a treatment. In the breath is the blueprint of everything that has happened to you. <clears throat> Didn't mention I've spunked since a young kid and my lungs are in terrible shape. And often while I do this work, I would ask, um, I would ask you to hold, probably, let's hold this finger. You hold it with one, I'd wrap it that way, yes. Okay. Um, For people that you deal with uh, regularly, does it become participatory on their part in the sense that, hmm, I don't know, in other words, they sort of know what to expect and uh, are working with you? They know what to expect. Um, But often, you know, often they go to sleep. So if that's participatory, I don't oh, know. Oh, well, no, no, I guess. <laughs> I guess when we were talking about tea ceremony, in a sense that there's an attitude, they're coming to you with an attitude after the first time that's, what, more relaxed or that they're working mm -hmm. with you. Now see, and I also have the opportunity to listen to stomach sounds, all these different aspects of your response to the work. I guess what I was saying is that in Western medicine we take the kind of attitude that we are passive and they are going to heal us, that they'll give us three pills and a certain effect will follow that, whereas I have the feeling that this and many of these other things, that it's a two-way street where where I work with you, you work with me. Does that make any sense? Yes, I, I hope so. And I, I always look at Jin Shin Jiu-Jitsu as having the potential to empower a person. Um, it is now know myself. That's one of the teachings of Jin Shin Jiu-Jitsu. Now know myself. Someone came to me and they were, they were very uncomfortable with the treatment. 
and they told me afterwards they the reason they were so uncomfortable with the treatment was because they were too aware of their own breath and And that's part of that now know myself. You do become more aware of yourself through Jin Shin Jiu-Jitsu. More intimate. Maybe it's just the position I'm in or whatever, but I, I am tending to sort of forget where I am and uh, forget about trying to make this interesting for viewers. I could very, <laughs> I could very easily just this is a good thing. <laughs> uh, any stories, Sylvia, of, well, I'd say of people that you have worked with where, I'm not asking for dramatic cures or anything, but where uh, people really have seemed to themselves transformed or, or what could they expect, I guess, is what I'm saying. Well, I'll speak of my father, who is, who just turned 86. And I've been in massage therapy for, oh, 20, I think I went, finished school in 20, 22 years ago. Well, my father was actually my first real massage teacher and that he had had some training as well and had taught me a bit and when I learned Jin Shin Jiu Jitsu he was the biggest skeptic and every time he would talk to me it would be oh what's that hocus pocus stuff you know and he's an old cowboy from Wyoming to boot so it had no, just didn't seem valid. He couldn't understand it. And, you know, he, it was great, though, because he got on my table, and he, and he would always go to sleep. And he'd get off the table an hour later, an hour and a half later, and he'd say, I don't understand this. I, I sure feel better, but it sure doesn't make sense to me. And then... When he was um, 75, he was diagnosed with um, prostate cancer. And he went through all the traditional therapies, radiation, chemotherapy. And they said it went, he, he was in remission. Well, when he turned 80, he had his blood tested and they said it was back. And I suggested that he work with the Jin Shin. And so he did. He got treatments from me. He got treatments from a friend of mine who works in, used to live in Billings and provide Jin Shin. And then he went to Scottsdale, Arizona, where the main office is. And two months after his uh, blood test, he returned to start traditional therapies and they told him that everything had normalized and that he wouldn't need to start those therapies. Now that's a pretty big, <laughs> now that's a big one. But, um... Did uh, you begin this before Henry died or? No. Uh, I w didn't work with Henry on it. Maybe a little bit. Um, I think my first class may have been, and I say it, you know, I must have worked on him some. You know, those last years of his life were, I don't know if it becomes kind of a blur in my timing and my remembering and It seems that I had more, the more energy and time to really study and devote myself to the, to the study after he had died, so. Now, do you move around the body, or is this? Mm -hmm. I do. 
I'm doing one particular flow right now, which has, they all have different hand positions. Usually you have an anchor hand, and one hand then moves from the different points on the meridians. How long uh, would a, a session with you last? I usually work an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. And that depends on the health of the person. Well, I can see how just stopping in the middle of your day, lying down and having someone focus energy and, and thought and concern for you uh, would be a healing thing just in itself. I feel a very relaxed. I mean, you brought me kind of to a stop. I've been running all day. I think it's beautiful work. It's just beautiful. Sylvia, could we stop now just because I do not have I don't think we have time for it. Okay. <laughs> and I want to give people a chance to, uh, to see what they can expect if they were to come to you or to someone who does what you do. Okay. Oh. Maybe. So, uh, Did you lose your the man lost his microphone. Just, do you want me to put it back on? No, no, on? no. We can, okay. It was a very informal show, and as I say, we're missing a cameraman, and we've got all kinds of excuses for it to not to be as good as it might be. Sylvia, it's great having you here. It's been great uh, having you starting to kick off this series. Uh, and uh, I hope those who, that we've informed people that they've learned something about a, a different way of looking at things. And as I say, we'll put up uh, the phone number for Blue Mountain Clinic, and I think we'll spell out in letters uh, so that people know exactly uh, how this looks like. Okay. okay. Thank you very much Thank for you. coming. Thank you. It's been great. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Please. Okay. Thank you very much. Yay. Good. Okay. I didn't stumble too much. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no you, were, you were great. You were great. I'm not, I'm not sure how that looked when you were lying down, but... Uh, okay. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be good. Yeah. Definitely.